can discuss that with Neil Dixon, who is Chief Executive of the NHS Confederation, which represents organisations across the healthcare system. Welcome. So what are your thoughts then, listening to that from John Ashworth, ending there saying this is a rescue plan for our NHS? We've heard criticism actually of politicians raising expectations around what can be achieved. So what do you think about what you've heard? So in one sense, this is definitely good news. This is a significant additional investment on top of the very significant investment which the Conservatives planned over this period. Mm -hmm. So I think throughout the service, they'll be welcome for the idea that there will be more resources. The reality, however, is that the demands which the health service is going to face over the next 10 or 15 years are very considerable. And what's being asked of it in terms of transforming the way that care is run is going to be a real challenge, whoever is in government. So I think the word of caution, first of all, is about raising expectations. We'll provide more of this, more of that. We'll achieve this, we'll achieve that. The answer is that the service is going to be under pressure, not least because workforce is a massive issue in terms of just attracting the staff and retaining the staff to provide these services. Mm -hmm. It is going to be a difficult ride over this next period. And... Trying to get that across both to politicians and the public, I think, is something that the service is very anxious about. But that said, you know, there is some additional investment going in here, which will help and will help us to start transforming the service. We did a study last year which suggested the NHS needed 4% plus in order to be able to start transforming the service. The current plans are around 3.4%. Mm -hmm. So this obviously will push us over the 4% figure. So in theory, it, it should help to drive that forward. But there are obvious concerns. There are areas like social care which need to be transformed. Mm -hmm. That will take time. Solving the workforce problems are very significant. Uh, you talked about the, the growing pressures on the NHS going forwards, obviously increasing population, ageing population, and you mentioned as well the, the number of vacancies in the service. In looking at that, Labour is saying that uh, they would renegotiate a Brexit deal to allow for freedom of movement for NHS workers from the EU. Would you welcome that? Yes, we would. I mean, I think the issue is post-Brexit, it really is up to the UK government to decide what immigration policy it wants. And we've certainly been urging, first of all, to get rid of the 30,000 cap, which is we, we'll let people in as long as they're earning more than 30,000. And we believe that that should be lowered because there are plenty of skilled people and in some ways, of course, it's not just the NHS, it's also social care. In somewhere like London, around half the people who are providing social care are people who are coming from European Union countries. We need to continue to welcome them, to make sure it's a welcome place to work, and to make sure that it's easy for them to come and go. But that is in the hands of government, and we will continue to put pressure, whoever is in power, to make sure that that happens. And so you've mentioned social care the times and obviously social care is something that has been in the news a lot and there's nothing currently f for social care from from either of the parties going forward is there well there is something from labor labor did announce some plans a few weeks ago around introduction of free personal care mm -hmm. uh, in england which would mirror some of the stuff that's currently going on in scotland we've yet to see where the conservatives go on that front right. the reality is I think the social care world and indeed now increasingly the health service have heard so many promises about how people are going to fix social care and they frankly haven't done it. Not just this administration but previous administrations have promised right back to the days when the Blair government commissioned a royal commission into this area. So it is an area of social policy that has reached a point where we absolutely need urgent action by whatever government comes into power. And we would certainly urge a cross-party agreement because we need a long-term settlement that everybody is uh, willing to go down, as, it, for example, as the parties did around pensions. Thank you very much, Neil Dixon.